Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today we are going forward and continuing the study in the book of Psalms. And on this particular video, we're studying uh, Psalms 33. Okay, and this, it doesn't actually give an actual ident identification to who did this psalm. In this Holy Bible, it doesn't. It may give one in another Bible, but in this one, it doesn't. But as we know, David did a lot of the Psalms, and it does sound like a Psalm that he would have done. I'm not saying that it is done by him, because again, it doesn't note that. But it is a Psalm that's recorded in one of the, you know, in the book of Psalms. So, Psalm 33, and it starts like, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. So it starts off actually giving uh, a decree, uh, giving, uh, yeah, just giving a decree telling you what to do, you know, command, rejoice, you know, because that's like a commandment that the Lord actually, re you know, he actually requires. And so this, and uh, this sounds like something coming from David. He says, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with heart, sing unto him with psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, yes it is, and all his works are done in truth. He loves righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. And by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth says he gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap and he lays up the depth in the storehouses let all the earth fear the lord let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe in of him okay and that's what we're supposed to do reverence our heavenly father he's our creator he created us he is our life and he is our breath he is our being whether you want to admit it or not he is okay um so it says for he he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. For the Lord brings the counsel of the heathen to naught. And he makes the devices of the wicked of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever and the thoughts of his heart is to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Now, I'm just going to stop with this verse 12 just because I want to say a little something here because it says, blessed is the nation, okay? And that really, you know, it, would, it refers to nationalities, okay? And that's, you know, whatever nationality you is. But because we've come under the covenant of Christ Jesus, we become one nation in him, okay? And that is why he said he came with the government upon his shoulders to the country and the the country that we be, are born again of the Holy Spirit and that is the country of heaven okay so um, yes I just wanted to stop there because and he says that he is, is and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance okay so that is important to know that uh, that nation who he says blessed is that is that nation whose god is their lord and jesus christ okay so let's go ahead to verse 13 the lord looks from heaven and beholds all the sons of men and from the place of his habitation he looks upon all the inhabitants of the earth he fashions their hearts alike and he considers all their works and there is no king so by the multitude of an host a mighty man is not delivered by much strength a horse is a vain thing for safety, and neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. And again, this is someone sounding like David, uh, just going on and talking about how good God is and uh, what he can do. Because he's witnessed it, he's a testimony, he's testifying. This, this is a testimonial song, is what it is, because this man is testifying right here about the goodness and what the Lord can do. And what he has done, and what he knows him to be able and capable of doing. He says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. 
Our soul waits for the Lord, and he is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy, holy, holy name. Okay, and then it says, let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in thee, O Lord. Amen. So, again, this sounded like someone, like I said, just giving a testimony, giving commands, and talking about the goodness of the Lord, and just uh, professing his goodness and, you know, testifying about, you know, maybe, you know, his experience is not going into detail, but how he's seen what God can do. Okay, so then from this Psalm, verses uh, 10 and 11, the Lord brings the counsel of the heathen to naught. He makes the devices of the people of no effect. And the counsel of the Lord, it stands forever. And the thoughts of the, his heart is to all generations. Those are the two verses that I'm going to elaborate on. Um, and the first thing we want to do is uh, talk about the counsel. The counsel of the Lord. Because uh, Jesus Christ is known as the counselor, okay? The great, that is the great counselor. And so let's look at a couple of the verses that goes into where that is actually listed at on my notation. So the first verse I'm going to, or the first book we're going to go into is Isaiah chapter 11. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11, and then we're going to start at verse 1, okay? And again, we're talking about the mighty counsel of the Lord, okay? Because Psalm, uh, Psalm 33 says, The Lord brings the counsel of the heathen to an end, to no effect, and it will be not effective. But the counsel of the Lord stands forever, okay? So in uh, Isaiah chapter 11, we're talking about how Jesus Christ is the counselor. He is the counsel of the Lord. It says, There rose... Or there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither will he reprove or correct the person after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Okay? So, and it goes on to talk about the reign and the ruling of Christ Jesus coming through. And this is in this particular chapter, and that's who he is talking about. Okay, so then... I was also led over to, uh, let's go over to book, the New Testament, the book of John, because we're talking about the counsel of the Lord. And we want to also make note, too, of what one of the, contra what one of the um, let's see, we're going to the book of John. Okay, book of John, chapter 14. And so, yes, okay, going back to what I was saying, we want to make sure we understand that, or get to understand that is that being a, having good, a good counselor, being a good counselor, being a good advisor, okay, one of the things that is required is understanding, okay? And the Word of God, actually, Jesus Christ tells us that throughout the Word. And then it also said when we just read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11 is the spirit of wisdom and understanding because they go hand in hand together okay so uh, so we're going to go over here to John chapter 14 and yeah, I'll say John chapter 14 and 15 you can read about uh, the, the Jesus Christ coming with the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, also known as the Counselor, the Advisor, the Truth. Uh, let's see, the Fire from Heaven, the Garment, the Spirit of Truth. Those are all in one, which is Christ, all in one. 
Okay, so then chapter 20 in the book of John. Let's see here. What do we have here? Because I did a whole Bible study on counselor and the counsel of the Lord because I know that, you know, Jesus Christ is the great counselor. You know, and he comes with advice about the kingdom and about conversion into the kingdom, a conversion from the celestial, I mean, conversion from the terrestrial into the celestial, conversion from the earth man made, the man, earth man into the spirit man, okay? And it's only spirit of the Holy Spirit man, okay? Okay, so um, here we are in John chapter 20. And let's see, verse 19 I have. Okay, so verse 19, chapter 20. It's the same day and evening by the first day of the week. Then the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Okay, I'm going to skip down. He says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. And whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained to you. But the verse I want us to really pay close attention to was 22 and where Jesus Christ breathed on them and told them to receive the Holy Ghost, okay? Which is the counselor, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, heaven living within an individual. Okay, and then also we're going to look at Jesus Christ in the book of Isaiah chapter 9. So these are just these are just uh, scriptures where Jesus Christ is being known as the great counselor that he is. Okay, uh, chapter 9 in the book of Isaiah. And then it says, I'm going to start at verse 1 right quick, okay? Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when the first... Uh, when at the first he delight he uh, he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. Let me stop. I'm not gonna start in verse one because that's just I'm just gonna start in verse six. Yeah, for unto us a child is born, because this we just want to get to where it talks about Christ Jesus being. That's what I want to get to. And it's Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, and a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Okay? So this is the evidence of Christ Jesus. He says, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David... And upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. For the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And the Lord sent a word. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. But that's it. That's uh, Isaiah chapter 9 and it's verse 6 through, verse, well actually verse 6 and 7 of chapter 9. That is it. And the word actually tells you in writing, Jesus Christ, uh, the Prince of Peace. Mr. Wonderful and the Counselor is Son of God. Okay, so now one of the individuals that had asked for wisdom in the Holy Bible was Solomon. Solomon was a great, uh, as we know, a prophet, a great leader, and he uh, was David's son, and he was promised to reign and rule over God's kingdom, and he did, and he was. But prior to doing that, uh, if we go to First Kings chapter three. Verse 9, it gives us insight into King Solomon. And that's 1 Kings chapter 4. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 4 and start with, well, actually chapter 3. Because chapter 3 goes into... Uh, Solomon asking the Lord. He says, and starting chapter 3, 1 Kings, and uh, 
chapter 3, verse 5, it says, In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now this is Solomon saying this to God Almighty regarding what, regarding himself basically, because that's what he's saying he, God has already done for David and that he is the one. He said, and now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. So, Verse 9 says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. So that is what Solomon asked for. Okay, he asked God for that first before anything and only because God asked him, what do you want? And so um, the thing to judge thy people, he said, give me an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people and the speech pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing and god said unto him because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself a long life neither has asked riches for for thyself nor has asked the life of thine enemies but has asked for thyself understanding and to discern judgment okay and god says behold i have done according to thy words i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any rise like unto thee. Okay, so he is saying God gave him that heart that he asked for, and that you can read more into that in First Kings chapter three. So Solomon received a wise heart, and with counsel to be a, a wise counselor, in order to have and uh, with understanding. Okay, because again, understanding is a as a, uh, one of the primary attributes of being uh, a counselor. You have to be understanding so that you can advise an individual. Okay, and so another verse or another chapter, we want to talk about, well, the, there's a, the wicked counselor, and that's in the book of Nahum. Okay, and Nahum is a book about the city of Nineveh where this uh, individual named Jonas was sent primarily to go preach the gospel and to tell people to repent. They repented, but then they actually, after they repented, they went back to their old way of living. So that's recorded in the book of Nahum. And the Lord refers to them as worthless, worthless counselors because <laughs> they had went back into their old way of, uh, you know, <laughs> of living. And so uh, that's in the recording of it is in Nahum verse 1 through 11. And of course, we have other different, uh, verses that validate the fact that Jesus Christ, the great counselor, uh, comes with counsel. You have, in order to be a counselor, a great counselor, you have to have understanding because you have to have understanding for people. And it's listed so many places in the Bible Proverbs 9, verse 10, Proverbs 4, verse 5, um, Proverbs 14, verse 29, Psalm 119, verse 130. Okay, and then Proverbs 3 and verse 13. Okay, because it is a very essential in being able to give wise counsel. Because again, the Lord has already decreed and declared the heathen's counsel. The counsel of the heathen will he will bring to no effect. It will not be effective in the earth. God bless him for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, holy God of heaven. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Okay, so that's going to bring us to the end of this uh, study regarding psalm 33 and the verses that we went into uh, actual elaboration on regarding the counselor of the great jesus christ the great i am holy god the savior of christ hallelujah and the attribute one of the attributes of being a great counselor and advisor is to have understanding in your heart okay so god bless you and i look forward to uh, speaking with you and studying again the feed my sheep foundation bible study chat Bible study study channel. <laughs> God bless you. Have a good day.